plants are the only living organisms that can prepare their own food. They are called autotrophs. The leaves of a plant are its food factories where the synthesis of food takes place. Water and minerals present in the soil are absorbed by the roots and transported to the leaves. Carbon dioxide from the air is taken in through the tiny pores present on the surface of the leaves. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. Such pores are called stomata. Water and minerals are transported to the leaves by the vessels which run like pipes throughout the root, the stem, the branches and the leaves. They form a continuous path or passage for the nutrients to reach the leaf. The leaves have a green pigment called chlorophyll. It helps the leaves to capture the energy of the sunlight. This energy is used to synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water. Since the synthesis of food occurs in the presence of sunlight, it is called photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to combine. In the process of photosynthesis, plants use carbon dioxide and water to make food called glucose which is distributed to all parts of the body. As a result, the plants breathe out oxygen in the air, which all living beings need to survive. In the absence of the sun, which is the ultimate source of energy on earth, plants would not have been able to survive. Plants transport water and nutrients to their leaves through a vascular transport tissue called xylem. These are dead, empty cells which connect end to end, forming long, continuous tubes. These tubes carry the water up. The tubes are continuous pipes that extend to the whole length of the trunk. Because water molecules carry a slight electric charge, they are attracted to each other. This natural attraction, known as cohesion, links the molecules in long continuous chains. At the leaves, water escapes the xylem and evaporates through microscopic pores on the surface, as in stomata. As each molecule breaks loose, it pulls up another molecule to take its place. This continuous pulling tension extends all the way down the xylem tubes to the roots. Here, the rising chain of molecules keeps the pressure low, allowing water and nutrients to enter through a process called osmosis. Phloem is the other living tissue in plants that carries organic nutrients known as photosynthate, in particular glucose, a sugar to all parts of the plant where needed. In trees, the phloem is the innermost layer of the bark. It is placed almost adjacent to the xylem. The phloem is mainly concerned with the transport of soluble organic material made during photosynthesis. This process is called translocation. Apart from xylem and phloem, a plant has other tissues such as parenchyma, chlorenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. These are called simple permanent tissues. The roots of plants absorb water and minerals from the soil through the root hairs by the process called osmosis. Only a small percentage of this water is used by the plants. The rest gets evaporated from the surface of leaves. This evaporation of water from the plant is called transpiration. There are three types of transpiration 
depending upon the site of transpiration. They are stomatal transpiration, lenticular transpiration and cuticular transpiration. Stomata as mentioned before are the openings on the leaf surface through which transpiration takes place. The stomata are surrounded by guard cells which help it open and close. This is how stomatal transpiration takes place. Lenticels are minute openings on the stem and a small amount of water is evaporated through them. This is called lenticular transpiration. Lenticels are less in number as compared to the stomata. Cuticular transpiration is the one which takes place from the surface of the leaves. Leaves are covered by a waxy layer of cuticle. The cuticle actually helps the leaves to reduce the amount of transpiration taking place.